Mr. Chairman, I salute. Does the gentleman seek to strike the last I word? I seek to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Actually, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I would strike many of the words uh, we've heard today. Um, I first want to acknowledge the leadership of my colleague from California. He has a characteristic that is all too rare in politics, an intellectual consistency. We have people who, on the one hand, talk about freedom and individual liberty and respect for state rights, but when it comes up against some pet project of theirs, all that goes out the window. Let's be very clear. This is not a case of people advocating that other people smoke marijuana. It is, for me, an advocacy that we allow people some degree of free choice. I listen to the general of Virginia, and I admire his diligence, but I, I have to say, um, I disagreed with almost everything he said. There was one thing he said that I thought was appropriate. He said we shouldn't be debating this at 7.30. And I agree, we should have been debating it at 4.20. Uh, that would have been a much better time. But other than that, he says, what about 15-year-olds? They'll see marijuana centers. Well, they'll see liquor stores. They'll see many more liquor stores than marijuana centers. The notion that because something is inappropriate for a teenager or a child, adults should not be allowed to use it is mindlessness. You can't run a society that says we're not going to let a 15-year-old see the things a 15-year-old can't do. Uh, liquor stores would be a great example. I have been disappointed on this point in the Obama administration. The Clinton administration was quite sensible on this. The Bush administration slipped back, and I had hoped that with the Obama administration it would be more sensible. The gentleman from Virginia said, well, this is a great source of money for the Mexicans. Sure, because we won't let people grow in America. To the extent that people are buying medical marijuana from Mexican drug cartels, I think a somewhat rudely overdone thing with regard to this, that's because we have had people refusing to allow them to grow it here in America for that use. People say, and again, I'm surprised to some of my conservative friends, well, there's no medical value. The federal government now becomes the arbiter and tells the states, you may not make that judgment that there's medical value. We know an awful lot of people think it has medical value for them as to uh, addiction uh, and the notion that, oh, you get all these drugs together. What marijuana has in common with OxyContin, which the gentleman from Virginia mentioned, and other drugs, is that we treat them the same. They're not the same in any rational way. They're not the same in addictive prospects. They're not the same except that we treat them the same, and we're the ones, by this foolish policy that I regret the administration I support is engaging in, who, who give people the notion that they're the same thing. It's a very simple point. People in the states have voted that marijuana should be available for people who want to use it for medicinal purposes. And the states are then in charge of setting up ways to deal with it. And we have people out of their ideological opposition announcing that they will not be allowed to do that. That they will tell people that it has no medical use despite the testimony of so many who think it does. Uh, this again is a form that I thought we learned didn't work and it's prohibition of the worst sort. And, by the way, it is going to lead to very ineffective law enforcement because we are a free country. You cannot impose in a free society like ours a regime of law enforcement that the public rejects without a great deal of repression. State by state by state, the people of the state have voted to allow this. So when we send the federal agents in to disregard what the state did, to disregard state law, of course you're going to engender resistance. Of course you're going to engender people going around. I, I have to say, um, I, and I would just close by saying to listen to this debate, I think tonight C-SPAN has merged with the Turner movie classics because Reefer Madness, that great movie from the 30s, appears to be being shown on both channels. Uh, this notion that because 15-year-olds are watching us talk about how People who are ill and in pain should be allowed with the vote of the state to get marijuana prescribed by a doctor, and that's going to lead a 15-year-old to go out and do it. Makes no logical sense. And as I said, if you're worried about what 15-year-olds can see, they can see X-rated movies that are being advertised. They can see cigarettes being sold widely. They can see alcohol. They can see all manner of things that we don't want them to do. 
This is a very sensible amendment. No one has shown, let me say finally, and you know the DEA, they, they want to do this. I have not seen the evidence that says that medical marijuana has led to any problem. I haven't seen it linked to crime. I haven't seen it linked to anything negative. What we have, frankly, are some prejudices being used to interfere with people's rights. Gentlemen's time has and of course, expired. is uh, Representative uh, Barney Frank, long, longtime supporter of uh, marijuana legalization and friend of normal.